Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Futurum Tech webcast and Futurum Tech TV. I am your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited about this Futurum Tech webcast interview series where I have Valerio Falaro joining me from Qualcomm. And we're going to be talking a little bit about RFFE. And I'm going to let him actually play the expert, maybe weighing in, providing a little bit of my context and analysis. But Hold your questions because I know there are a lot of people out there wondering more about what is going on with 5G, RFFE, and the mobile space overall. And we've got a great guest joining us. Quick disclaimers we appreciate Qualcomm joining us as a partner in this particular webcast. And just so you know, this show is for information and entertainment purposes only. And while we will be talking about and to publicly traded companies, please do not take anything on this show as investment advice. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Valerio Valaro. Valerio, how are you doing today? Good, Daniel. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, super excited to have you join me on the show. As I sort of teed it up, a lot going on. We're seeing explosive growth in mobility and connectivity and so much more. Our pandemic-fueled world only brought us closer to our technology, spending more time on all of our devices. And we certainly saw 5G proliferate quickly during this last 18 or so months that we've been hopefully doing our part in helping end and put this pandemic behind us. So, um, you know, let's start off with the with the easy stuff. And, you know, quick introduction. Tell uh, everyone out there a little bit about yourself, your role at Qualcomm and uh, you know, maybe an interesting thing that uh, you do every day to start off your work day. All right, let me give it a shot. Um, um, I'm Valerio Filaro. I'm uh, uh, Vice President of Product Management here in, uh, in Qualcomm. I'm looking after our uh, RFFE product line. Um, so again, RFFE uh, is a primer uh, radio frequency front end. So it's a very uh complex uh, uh set of components there are in everybody's uh smartphones and uh, we'll talk about 5g complexity uh, there's a lot of them in a 5g phone what do i do how to start day um i open my computer and work like most of us now uh we don't get to go to work much uh but the uh it's like you said it's exciting times i think the uh new technologies and you're absolutely right we'll see uh uh, this 5G momentum growing, and uh, with that, all the challenges and complexity that we're trying to address, and that's probably what I do after I wake up during the time, try to address with the team those challenges. Oh yeah, you got a ton of them, and the company's growing really fast. The RFP business is growing really fast. I'm gonna hit you up on that in a minute, but you don't you don't drink coffee? I do drink espresso. You might have guessed. Ah, right, right? There you go, espresso, <laughs> which. In most parts of the world is what uh you know is coffee you know you when when That's you right. go to europe or other parts of the world australia south america coffee is a you know it's a small amount of very very rich dense flavorful uh yeah. in america we drink this sludge these huge cups of this brown water that uh, has some uh, ex expression of coffee within it um in fairness, though, I like both. I, I do both. I start off every day, and uh, I don't think it's that interesting, but I definitely enjoy having a few good hot cups of coffee and listening to the business news yeah. and figuring out what happened while I was asleep for anywhere for three or four, <laughs> four hours. They both keep you going. That's what matters. It's all caffeine. It's all it, good. It, it sure does. So, you know, you sort of set this up already, but you know, as a quick primer, you kind of told everybody what RFFE is and what, how, you know, what the acronym stands for. Yeah. But, you know, it's a really big deal. And when, when companies are trying to deploy uh, 5G at scale, when they're trying to make these devices work well, when we're trying to realize the promise of, of millimeter wave, it doesn't, 5G doesn't work without that RFFE technology. Um, talk a little bit why it became such an important thing you know, uh, you know, to 5G successful rollout. Yeah, I mean, the uh, uh, 5G or 4G, no phones would really work without our front end, right? Obviously, it's, uh, it's like tires for a, for, for a car. Um, the uh, In general, let me start maybe uh, besides the acronym. The uh, um, 
what constitutes RFFE is this bunch of components. You might have heard like a power amplifier, uh, low noise amplifiers, uh, filters, uh, um, switches, antenna tuners, envelope trackers. So this is really all the function of this very complex net of, uh, of, uh, of components tied together is really, it's essentially what allows you to send, uh, transmit and receive signal over the air. Now, the, uh, with 5G, that level of complexity has grown almost exponentially. Right? And the, uh, you know, we always uh, tend to uh, quote some of the statistics that in the early days of LTE, uh, you know, we were looking for a global phone having a handful of bands, less than 20. If you look at now all the combination for a truly global phones with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 5G, sub gigahertz, millimeter wave, I hear numbers like in the 10,000s, right? So it's, a, and that translates in level of complexity, uh, combination of bands that need to work together, uh, make sure that they don't interfere with each other. So that complexity, of course, is also an opportunity for somebody like uh, a Qualcomm. Uh, both from a business perspective and from a technology perspective to innovate and, and, and offer differentiation to our, our customers and eventually to the users. So what, um, and that's exactly what, what, what made us get into this market, right? Uh, we, we understood the importance of our front end to a new technology like 5G. And, uh, you know, we've been investing quite a bit to, uh, to, uh, Kind of like simplify the complexity, absorb the complexity, so that uh, to make it easier for our OEM to uh, uh, to launch 5G devices in the market, and of course, making it a profitable business for us in the in the process. Yeah. Oh, so humble. Listen, <laughs> I want to I want to press you a little bit on this though, because yeah. Qualcomm did not have to get into this space. There were other companies that were doing this. You could yeah. have, uh, you know. Qualcomm values partners, use many partners in many parts of your business, but there was a decision made and it was clearly seen that this was an opportunity. And Absolutely. now as this is becoming, you know, I believe a billion plus run rate business now. Yeah. Why did you go down that path? Why did Qualcomm see this opportunity? Was it because they, you know, the, how important 5G is, was there something else that, you know, kind of tied this thread together? Well, at the high level, right? I mean, this was a clear opportunity to to for Qualcomm to evolve for you know from the leader in smartphone chip suppliers in uh, uh, modem suppliers to really become the uh, as we briefly mentioned the leader in uh, in providing the full system solution, right? You hear words uh, uh, from us, uh, and you know I can explain a little bit what we mean by that, like modem to antenna. Uh, so really, not just the component supplier, but we we sell technology. We wanna we wanna provide uh, full solutions, and as part of the full solution, of course, our front end is is a big component, right? In terms of uh, bill of material, and in terms of uh, complexity, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, the technology that, that that we can offer and the differentiation we can offer. So that what was that, that's what what was triggered. Uh, the uh, the decisions to enter uh, you know some of the uh, investments that we did and uh, and that keeps driving uh, our, our our roadmap right you hear more and more from us the uh, uh, some of the new technology that we're introducing in the market differentiation but it's really the full system level approach that we saw as an opportunity and in a certain way as a necessity now you're right there are there are people out there that were doing RFFE and they were doing pretty well. But uh, everybody was always looking at it at a component level, right? Trying to address uh, uh, the box of RFFE. I think the challenge, the opportunity, and where we come and, uh, and are in a unique position as Qualcomm to address is the full system level view. And that's where we are differentiating ourselves. Absolutely. And that's what we kind of talk about the RF plus 5G system. And that's been Absolutely. one of the unique differentiators. That's been one of the components that I think us as analysts have looked very closely at as different companies are, are launching their flagship uh, devices. Is which company's 5G RF system are they using? Because there is, it is not all created equal. We've seen that over the years with iPhone when there were different uh, chip makers that were providing uh, components that numerous benchmarking tests found that it was not all created equal just because they were on the same standard. So 
it matters. Um, and so you sort of began alluding to the competitive landscape. And I'm not asking for you to beat up on any other company that's playing in this space, but the company has clearly shown in mobile RF a leadership position very quickly. Yeah. Um, what do you think enabled that to happen, though? Like, what enabled the company to so quickly become this leading player in mobile RF? And of course, I'll kind of tie this with my next question because it actually just makes sense, you know, and have a realistic shot at 20% plus of the entire uh, RFFE market by 2024, which is a goal I've heard Cristiano and I've heard other executives at Qualcomm talk about. Yeah. So l let me start from the beginning of your question. So w what uh, uh, it, it's, it's very challenging right now to go buy a 5G phone and don't find Qualcomm RFFE uh, components in it, right? So another way of looking at it, uh, um, it the, our strategy has proven successful. Uh, the um, uh, we are virtually in every 5G phone. Uh, when I say we are RFFE components, are virtually in every 5G phone be commercialized. And uh, and, and besides that, you'll see a trend, right? By by looking at public information centered down, that uh, more and more phones in the market are virtually completely using 5G RFFE uh, components uh, from Qualcomm. Uh, why? Um, it's uh, first of all because of the uh, that system level approach that we have Qualcomm have taken, and that's the value that we offer to our audience, right? So kind of like um, um, uh, hide the complexity, right, for for our audience, both from a technical perspective, but also from simplifying their 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 go to market, uh, in the sense that uh, you know by uh, having a look at the entire platform, we do a lot of we resolve a lot of complexity also from a system level implementation uh, that the customer doesn't need to go and address by themselves. They don't need to go and take parts from uh, different vendors, put them together, resolve the challenges. We do it for them. Uh, so that's certainly something that has a great value, both from a time to market perspective and also from an R&D investment from an OEM uh, uh, view. Um, now, uh, again, we have released public information that I think uh, uh, we will uh, we'll certainly make it available um, uh, to show the trend that I'm talking about in terms of phones and 5G and 4G RFFE attached to those phones. This is all public information. They'll keep growing. Uh, and, uh, and that's really what the value that our OEMs are seeing into uh, RFFE parts from Qualcomm, right? And that's what, again, um, differentiates us from, from, from the other guys. Um, and in the process, of course, uh, you know, we keep showing better maturity. Performance is one key item, especially if you look at uh, a high tier phones. It's not just about making it easier for customer, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you got to worry about user experience. So performance is key. And, uh, and again, Performance doesn't necessarily mean uh, uh, how fast you are, but also uh, how efficient you are in, in doing that. What sounds like a very simple function in sending and transmitting signal over the air in terms of uh, maximizing battery life and, uh, you know, make sure that your phone doesn't feel hot when you are using it. And those are all the challenges that uh, we're helping OEM solve. In. And I think, you know, the results are, are showing that uh, we're being successful in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and we'll flash up here and also put a link in the comments to a graphic that you sort of referred to here that just shows across the uh, Snapdragon portfolio of in, in, in modem RF systems selected by big OEMs. You got Samsung's, Google's, Motorola's, Motorola, Motorola uh, Vivo, Xiaomi and Oppo, all, for instance, selecting, um, you know, Qualcomm's modem RF systems in a number of their flagship devices. And this actually will show a graphic, not just an overall selection, but the, then the, the parts and pieces, you know, whether that's, you know, transceiver, millimeter wave modules, filters, tuners, et cetera. So take a look at that. Definitely worth seeing. Um, definitely a number of wins. And this is really just a small selection of all the companies that are partnering, which is really why this technology, in my opinion, has taken off so well. All the big OEMs are picking and they're choosing. And when they choose, it's a pretty good indicator of their confidence 
of what is going to provide that best in-market experience. So only got a couple minutes left, and I'd love to have our guests, Valerio, uh, not only tell me about how they start their day, which, by the way, I sometimes ask and sometimes don't. Um, we know we both like coffee. But I also like to have them give me a glimpse into the future and tell me where do they see their business going? Where do they see this business going? And, and I will keep you in the guardrails of what you wake up and do every day, which is this business. Where do you see over the next few years? Give me a three, five or 10. I'll let you pick of how this business is going to evolve. Uh, that's a very good question. So the uh, let's start from where we are now, right? So we are, we're on track, I think you've heard it from our CEO, uh, we're on track to be our number one vendor in terms of revenue for our FFE. So uh, what happens next? Uh, we're going to continue to grow. I mean, one way of looking at it is that really 5G has practically just started, right? So the... Uh, the penetration of 5G into a lower tier, even a Asian market, it's happening. And uh, and that's one thing that will contribute to further growth uh, of our RFFE business. Uh, the, uh, I mean, of course, we will keep investing in uh, this uh, roadmap and we're doing it. Uh, in, uh, um, the system level aspects, which I think is what really sets us apart. Uh, but also by looking at this addition market, there are opportunities, you know, for RFFE into more uh, uh, tailored architecture for this addition market. I'm talking about wearables. I'm talking about uh, IoT and others, right? Uh, so right now, what we are seeing, we're really just at the surface of uh, what we can achieve. Um, and uh, bottom line, where do we see it? in five years? It's uh, technology leaders um, in the both from, uh, again, system level, but also from technology in terms of, uh, you know, acoustics, uh, envelope trackers, all the stuff that you hear from us. And uh, there will be new techs coming up eventually, right? We're already working. I can discuss details. Uh, you know, you can call it 6G. Of, uh, and that's, that's also other opportunity to grow. So the future is bright. We're very excited where we are today, but that's the beginning, right? Well... I guess, what do they say? The future is bright and we have to wear shades. Is that how the song went? I, I don't know. No copyright. So edit that out if you have to. But uh, Valario, it's great to hear from you. I think we're going to see all this technology also really spurn the growth of categories like AI, categories like uh, VR, XR, AR. I know uh, you use different, te you, everybody uses different terminology, but we are going to see this great level of connectivity, throughput, bandwidth, speed enabling us to really do what we keep hearing we are going to be able to do each and every day. Certainly being aided and supported by the technology that you uh, are, are helping be part of and build every single day. So Valerio, Falaro, thank you so much for spending some time with me here, here on Future in Tech webcast at Future in Tech TV. I'm going to put you out in the green room, but thanks for, uh, for joining, and we will hopefully have you back soon. All right. Thank you. Look forward to that. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, sir. All right, everybody, you heard it here, RFFE, making the difference in how we will connect. Uh, the devices manufacturers are investing in the technology they're putting into them and the experience that you, all the users, are having with those devices each and every day. For this episode, it's time to say goodbye. Hit that subscribe button if you like what you hear. We have lots of interviews with executives from many of the most interesting and innovative companies in the world. We'd love to have you as part of our community. For now, got to go. But this is only goodbye for a moment. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.